Today we're taking a look at a military inspired field watch from an independent watchmaker that's located here in the United States called Towson. They actually regulate, hand finish, and assemble all of their watches in Baltimore. So let's flip the camera and take a look at the recruit from Towson Watches. Towson, located here in the United States, as I mentioned in the intro. So they are an American company, basically assembling their watches here in the United States, hand assembled in the United States. Their movements are regulated here in the United States and also decorated in the United States. The case on this watch, I believe, is German made, the dial Swiss made, the strap Italian made. So it's a little bit of a mishmash of really the best of the best, which is pretty cool in my opinion. It also comes with really nice packaging, it comes in a wood box that has an outer cardboard box, but they also sent along this beautiful leather pouch. It's a single watch travel pouch that is signed Towson Watch Company right there. It also came with this black leather strap, as I mentioned, made in Italy. Really nice buckle on there as well. It came with a book and it also came with this booklet. This is warranty information and of course, just uh, information on your watch. Inside that booklet, it gives you information on their lifetime warranty. I highly recommend checking out their website if you are interested in this watch or any of their watches, find out more information on their lifetime warranty. That is probably, I think, the first time that I've ever seen that. They are really standing behind their watches. They've been around for a while already, and they are making really high quality watches here in the United States. This is their most affordable watch currently. They make very high-end skeletonized watches that are automatic, that are using precious metals, that cost in the tens of thousands. However, this watch does not cost that. You're getting a lot for what this watch actually costs, considering all the components and where they're made and how they are finished. I think you're getting a pretty spectacular watch. We're gonna go through it right now. So this is a very strange movement inside this watch. I'm gonna flip over the watch immediately so you can see it. It looks like an ETA 2824 or a Salita SW200, but what they're apparently doing, and if you look at their website, again, I highly recommend checking out their website. Look at their website, and they're saying essentially that they are combining a Salita SW200 and a 2824. So it meets ETA's specifications. However, it has a 46 hour power reserve, not a 38 hour power reserve. It has 26 joules and it is regulated, hand regulated in the United States to be plus or minus 10 seconds per day. So that is a lot right there, just in the movement. Also, blued screws, perlage, Geneva striping, uh, and of course, they have decorated the rotor. It's a custom rotor for Towson. So a lot is going into this movement. All of that is done here in the United States. So that is a very big deal. You get a screwed in case back push pull crown. I believe this is only 50 meters of water resistance. And then it gives you the number right there. This is a limited edition, I think of only a hundred. And this is the recruit. So they also made a cadet. The recruit gets a green dial, the cadet gets a blue dial. However, both of them look black. They're as close to black as blue and green can get, I have to say. So this is a matte colored dial. In the middle of the dial, there is a 24 hour track. That has a little bit of a texture to it. I'll do close up so you can see that. And then the remainder of the dial, the outer portion of the dial, so it's sort of a step dial, that is sort of a bead blasted portion, a matte portion. Uh, and there's loom applied to the indices. And then you have a 12 hour track, obviously. You have loom on the hands, they're sort of fence post hands. And then you have a white second hand. You have a date at the three o'clock. That's because this is a Salita SW200 slash 2824, very strange movement, I have to say. But one of my favorite things about this watch is the bezel and the case. The case on this watch is gorgeous. Take a look at this, this is a field watch. Now the finishing here, you don't have any polishing, but all of the satin and brushing on here is done very, very nicely. Um, and it's thin, so I'm gonna just do quick measurements on here. 10.2 millimeters thick, you have a giant crown on here, 6.8 millimeters. Lugs turned down pretty nicely. 
and the lug to lug on here is 48.1. On their website, they say this is a 41 millimeter watch, but if you actually measure it from the, uh, not including the crown guards, it's 39.9. Uh, I guess they give you that 41 millimeter measurement because if you measure with the crown guards, you're gonna get around uh, 41 millimeters. But technically I would say this wears like a 40 millimeter watch, not a 41 millimeter watch. The bezel is really interesting because you have this beautiful coin edge that goes all the way around. It's a very, very fine coin edge, almost like a quarter. If you put a quarter on its side and you look at that, it's a little bit even finer than that and it is gorgeous. They did a great job finishing the bezel on here. And then there's a line that goes through the bezel uh, that's just separating it. Doesn't really have any function, but it looks really good. And then you have a flat sapphire crystal with AR coating. You also get a flat sapphire crystal on the case back. Uh, the strap, as I mentioned, is a brown leather strap that is handmade in Italy, and it is very, very high quality. And then you have a signed buckle and it has a little enamel in it, so it's a little black on the buckle, which looks really good. Um, all in all, just really nicely made. So uh, you also have the black strap here, and the black strap gets the exact same treatment. It's made in Italy as well. You get the exact same buckle. I'm not sure if they include a free strap with every single watch, but uh, I believe they were for a while. I'm not sure if they're currently doing that. So there's only one complaint that I would have about this watch is the date. The date at three o'clock cuts off the index at three. So the three is sort of just shaved off for some reason. I think they could have went about this a little bit differently. Uh, it could be because of the size of the watch and the location of where the date wheel would be. Uh, I would have done away with the three o'clock index and maybe just left the date. Uh, but that's my sort of uh, opinion there. Other than that, I think this watch is really a winner um, and it looks it looks fantastic. They did a great job in the design of the case um, and the, you know, the choice of materials. And obviously, like I said, it is hand assembled and hand regulated here in the United States and hand decorated. The movement is hand decorated. Uh, very quickly, let me show you the watch that I have on my wrist and then we will throw this watch on my wrist and we will do a quick loom shot. We'll also talk about price. So very quickly today I have on the Belcanto from Christopher Ward. This is a pretty insane watch that came out this year. Uh, one of my favorite watches from 2022. This is in grade five titanium, uh, very light watch, but the uh, bracelet is in grade two titanium. And that was one of my complaints about that watch. Uh, I thought that was, you know, a miss. Uh, in my opinion. Uh, one other complaint that I would say about this watch is that it does have a green dial, but if you're looking at it, it does not look like a green dial whatsoever in any light. So you have to really be in direct sunlight to see this as a green dial. Um, that's not a bad thing. So if you like this color, then, you know, that doesn't make any difference whatsoever. It looks like a black, sort of matte black, slightly olive green dial. You know, it's a really nice uh, color, but I think that people who are expecting a green dial when they order a green dial, you're not gonna be getting a green dial. You're gonna be getting as close to black as green can get. That's, that's the way I could describe it. Uh, I definitely like the brown leather on here. I think it looks really good and it brings out the dial a little bit more in my opinion. There you go, it's 40 millimeters. On my seven and a half inch wrist, they have it listed at 41 millimeters. I think it wears more like a 40 millimeter watch. You can see uh, very thin, beautiful, close to the wrist. Uh, 50 meters of water resistance, which isn't bad. Uh, it could be 100 meters of water resistance would be a little bit better, but all in all, I think a really nice everyday watch that you could wear um, very comfortably. And obviously it's really well made. And you could be very proud of it because it's also hand assembled in the United States, flip it over and you really have a nice movement in here. Kind of an interesting movement and kind of an interesting talking point for the watch in general. The fact that they did that and somehow get 46 hours of power reserve out of it. And it's still 26 joules and apparently a little bit thinner than what the Etta and Salita movements uh, are uh, standard. So pretty weird. Anyway. This cost $1,250. Now, I know some people will 
kind of balk at that price because they think it's a little bit on the expensive side. I, I can't agree with that. I think this is actually priced really well for what you're getting, considering the fact that you're getting a Swiss made dial, you're getting a German made case. It's all hand assembled here in the United States. And then on top of that, they're using an ETA 2824 and a Salida SW200 to create a movement that is essentially their own, I guess and then hand decorating it here in the United States. You're getting a sapphire crystal in the front and back, and the strap is made in Italy. There's a lot that goes into this watch. Uh, I can't imagine that they would be making a ton of money on a watch like this because of the amount of work and effort that goes into it. But I don't know, tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think of this watch? What do you think of Towson? I really do think they make some pretty interesting looking watches. They're one of the, I, you know, I, I subscribe or follow a lot of Instagram watch channels or watch pages. And they are one of the few that I follow that uh, I, you know, I've never actually had any contact with. And then one day I just reached out to them um, and I've been following them for a few years because I've always thought that their watches were really cool. I thought they were too small to ever send me a watch to review. And luckily here we are, they did and I'm really happy to show it to you guys. I'm really, really excited about this. Uh, anyway, uh, very quickly, a loom shot. There you go, loom is okay on here. All of the indices are loomed. Uh, I wish that the numerals were loomed as well, but not a huge deal. They're printed in the exact same color, so uh, it would have been nice if both of them were loomed. The hands are loomed decently, and I wish there was a little bit of loom on the second hand. That's the only other complaint that I would have here. I think the loom is good. I think that if they put a little bit of loom on the second hand, of course, that would always help. So you could see that your watch is working in the dark. Uh, I always like to have that. And it's just a little bit of action with the loom in the dark. Why not? But that's what they did. And I think it looks pretty good, liberally applied where it is applied. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. As I mentioned before, they do make some really high-end watches. This is their most affordable watch, and I would imagine it's very hard for them to make a watch like this and keep the price low, especially since they are making them in Baltimore, uh, hand assembling them, regulating them, decorating them, using two different movements to make one movement just so they can make it a little bit thinner and have a longer power reserve. I think that's pretty insane uh, that they did all of that to get to you know a movement that is essentially something that they could have used off the shelf. So it shows that they're trying to do more and they did, I think they did here. Um, this is a really nicely made watch and uh, obviously hand assembled in the United States, you can't go wrong. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I wanna hear from you guys. Please also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog, all one word. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.